morning folks I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School what I wanted to do today was I wanted to have a little discussion about the evolution and history of the bush pot bush pot is a common modern name for any pot that you would take into the bush for disinfection of water making medicinals or cooking food bush pots are nothing new bush pots have been used back in history all the way into the mid 1700s and probably earlier than that of different materials we're going to talk about bush pots from the 1750s era through the current time so that you understand the evolution of the bush pot and how things are just as similar today as they were over 250 years ago so let's start out I'm gonna move some of these pots I've got lots of pots sitting here from different periods in time and I'm going to move some of these out of the way so that we can talk about them from the beginning. First, let's understand that the reason the container is so important and the reason it's one of the five C's, and in your emergency kit, your container should be stainless steel. It should be a minimum of 32 ounces or 32 ounces, and it should be capable of carrying water over distance. Once you start talking about redundancies or extended kit, then you'll want to put other containers in your kit as well so that you have the option not only to carry water or to boil it in emergency or to make medicine or foods or make char and things like that, but also to have multiple containers so that you can do multiple tasks at one time. And that's where the bush pot really shines, is to give you that multiple tasks. In the you know, early days, the 1700s, the bush pot was just made of tin. It was a soldered, folded tin with a bale handle and they came in different sizes. This would be the norm of what we see today. It would also be very normal to see this on a horseback or a canoe even in the period. And there would be pots that would nest inside this as well. And we're going to look at those nesting pots. These two are the same. This is one that came out of my trucking kit. This is a brand new one. And we'll look at these pots a little closer so that you can get a better feel for what they look like. Now this pot is about a two quart pot. As you can see, it's just tin that's been soldered together. Something like this would have been very typical carry in the 1700s, all the way up in through the mid 1800s. And even today you can buy these pots and they work really well. If you're trying to nest something like this, you could put several pots inside one another, like this of different sizes. So you'd have a two quart pot and probably a one quart pot. And if you wanted to go further down than that even, you could go like this trekking kit where it's got the one main pot that's about a quart. Then it has like a pint pot and inside that it has a folding handle cup. And that would be like a trekking style kit, something you could put in a small backpack or a haversack. But all of these things would have been available to the long hunter or the woodsman of the 1750s and 1760s through the Revolutionary War and up through and including the Civil War. All of these things would have been carried. So this is a typical bush pot, if that's what you want to call it, or cook pot of that time period. Now this was what was called the lunch pail. And this type tin was typically carried by not only blue collar workers of the late 1800s during the Industrial Revolution period, but also by children that were going to school and carrying their lunch. This was the predecessor to the metal lunch box, basically. This one's missing a D-ring, it is an original. But it is a tin, soldered probably with lead solder container, about one quart, typical bush pot. And it could be used not only to carry items in, like bread, vegetables, hard boiled eggs, things like that, but also coffees, teas, chocolates that can be prepared in this pot over a pot belly stove or over a fire. So you can see that the bush pot remained the same pretty much, just different material uses, different ways that they made those things all the way up and through the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Now once we got into a later period when aluminum came about, when we're talking, well now we're talking about Horace Kephart's time, you know, Nesmuk would have carried something very similar to this or very similar to this and he talks about his nesting kit of tin pots in his book so these nested tin pots would have been what Nesmik would have carried Horace Kephart on the other hand 
early in his time period would have had things like this but later on in his writings he talks about aluminum pots like this this one being over two quarts this one being just a little under two quarts that nested inside each other like this and they were just a solid aluminum pot with a lid that could nest so that you could pack them comfortably in a pack or a pack saddle or in a canoe or what have you inside of a metal or a wooden box and take them on your trek or trip with you the real predecessor to the modern day bush pot in my eyes is the aluminum coffee pot and this aluminum coffee pot is a non percolating type coffee pot so you'd be making cowboy coffee in this pretty much and it just has a lid it has butterfly handles on the back which is very typical of modern day bush pots it has a several position bale on it again very reminiscent of the modern day bush pot and this one's probably from the 50s it does have a spout on the front with straining holes in it to allow you to pour coffee out without getting the grounds in there which also makes it very good for medicinals and things like that to be cooked in or noodles pastas things that you want to strain off work very good in this pot this is one of my favorite carry pot options you can find these a lot of times at yard sales and flea markets things like that for five to ten dollars at most i got a complete set of this aluminum stuff for less than twenty dollars or right at twenty dollars off ebay but these things were typically made from the 1950s probably all the way up through the 70s these things were very popular and easy to find a lot of boy scout cook sets had a very similar pot to this included in them as well and pots like this as well as a bigger stewing type pot which i have off to the side over here so this is a very nostalgic piece of gear but it's also this shows you that evolution of the bush pot where the butterfly handles have been added the locking bale system has been added and then you've got a straining spout here now if you look at the more modern day bush pot like the one that we carry on our website that's made of aluminum from four dog stove company it is almost exactly this pot it's got butterfly handles on it it has a locking bale on it this one's a lot newer so it locks much better than the old one does it's wore out here and instead of having the straining device on the front and the spout specifically made for cooking coffee and things like that in it just has a v in the front so that you can pour it through this v there's really no way to strain on this but it's a very nice aluminum bush pot for a modern type bush pot very similar to this I would say this one has a little bit of advantage of the straining it also has a disadvantage that you have a piece of aluminum sticking out here that you can bend where this one does not again this is still made out of aluminum so we have a lot of people that have complained about the aluminum and they wanted st stainless steel so we created this bush pot which basically is exactly like the other two bush pots other than the handles are square it has the locking bale handles on it it has a lid it has a V on the front, it's a two quart pot, but it's made out of solid stainless steel. Now, I think that there is some confusion on the internet as far as what people like about bush pots and what they don't like about bush pots. Um, I saw a video where a guy was talking about he doesn't like bush pots that he can't turn upside down and shake with the contents inside them without the lid coming off. Well, if I'm standing on my head and my bush pot's upside down or my pack's upside down, I probably have a lot bigger problems than kit falling out of my bush pot. I want my lid to fit fairly loose. I don't want it tight. I want it to be a friction fit like this one is, but I don't necessarily want it to be hard to get off. This one here is plenty hard to get off, if not too hard in some instances, and that will wear in over time and it'll get looser like this pot has over time. This one was a tight friction fit when it was new, but over time you're going to wear that down a little bit. That metal's going to wear, that aluminum, things like that. You're going to get dings in it and it's going to get looser. But if I'm fixing a hot liquid in this pot over the fire, number one, I don't want to have to wrestle getting the lid off of it and splash hot liquid all over myself. Nor do I want to have this hanging over the fire and have to take the lid off to stir something inside and splash the liquid all over my fire. I would rather have this large D-ring, which is on this pot, and that was an improvement we made to this pot, was putting this larger D-ring on there. It's much larger than the one on this aluminum, much larger than the one on the old style aluminum, and it's also more reminiscent of the D-rings that were on these type pots. You can see these lids fit loosely. They didn't 
they fit really hard they were just a friction fit the reason for that is, is i could stick a stick in there very easily to pop that lid off when i've got this in the fire so i don't want my lids to fit so tight that i have to wrestle to get them off and anybody who's done much time in the bush i'm sure would agree with that so the bottom line of this conversation is a bush pots are nothing new the new is bush pot they were always just cook pots and cook pots have been around since like i said the 1700s the same style pots were used probably from the 1700s to the late 1800s when they went to more of a pot design style like this and started using more cast iron around the homestead and permanent type cooking devices but for someone who was going on a trek or a scout or a camp and camping was big in the late 1800s that's when the camping revolution really came along where people worked all week and they had weekends off and they decided to go out and visit wilderness areas to get away from city life and they would carry things like this not only to work for their lunch but also to cook things in like coffees teas chocolates and possibly food as well and then as time went by and we camped more and more and we did more time in the bush we created things that were a little bit more conducive to our needs that were a little safer that didn't have lead-based solder in them and things like that and we went to aluminum now a lot of people have concerns about aluminum nowadays so they've went to anodizing that aluminum and if that's not enough for you you can always go with stainless steel stainless steel is going to be your heaviest option but it's also going to be your most bomb proof option as far as the destructibility or the durability of that piece of gear but I like all of these bush pots really well I've used them all. This one's used and abused. This one's used and abused. I have one of these I recently gave to a young man that's used and abused. This one's definitely used and abused. That's, it's my favorite. This one I've never used because of the lead-based solder and because it's an antique. I just keep this on the mantle of my fireplace. But I wanted to show it to you guys today in this bush pot discussion because it shows the progression from the 1750s to you know 2014. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video today. I thank you for everything that you do for our school, for our business, for our families, everything that you do for our sponsors, affiliates, instructors, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.